Hello and welcome to HobbyKing.com. My name is Stuart and I'm here to proudly present to you a new release from Durafly. It's not a brand new model, but it is a peach of a model. It is the Durafly Mark II Spitfire. Now at the very beginning there, I said it's not a brand new model. And what I mean by that is that there has been a version of this already released. Those of you that know Durafly and Hobby King know that we like our Spitfires. We've had, I think, maybe six or seven of them in total. One of the first of the new line of Durafly, by which I mean a better breed, better detail, better produced, and better marketed brand of model, was the Mark 1A. That came out about four or five years ago. Now, in terms of full size and the model, there's a lot of symmetries between them. Um, first of all, obviously, the Mark 1 uh, came first, and then the Mark 2, both as the Durafly sense and in the full size Supermarine sense. Um, the Differences between the Mark I and the Mark II are very, very small, actually. So what that meant is that, as a model, we could take the original Mark I and very easily change it into a Mark II. And aesthetically speaking, they're identical. The way that you can tell that this is a Mark II is particularly in this case because of the scheme. And that's the special note about the Durafly Mark II. It brings together the best of two worlds, uh, the RAF, the British, the Spitfire, and then the American and Canadian volunteers that flew in the Eagle Squadron. And that's the key thing about this uh, Mark II. It's presented in its Eagle Squadron scheme, so it very much celebrates that special relationship between the US and Britain. Uh, out of the box, it comes pre-painted in this green and brown. The decals are provided for you to apply if you wish. So you can do the supplied Eagle Squadron if you wish. However, also the Mark I in real life used this same color scheme. It wasn't until later in 1941 that they changed over, the RAF changed over to the, the green and gray. Uh, so at this point in early 1941, it's still using the brown and green. So the point being is it comes out of the box pre-painted in detail, but you can apply your own uh, decals or markings if you wish. It's not only what makes the uh, Durafly Spitfire special, it's also one of the prettiest and most accurate Spitfires on the market. And that is with a great deal of thanks to our good friend Tom Hunt, that some of you may know, he had a hand in the development and design of the original Mark 1A from Durafly. It's actually based on, the outline of the model is based on his drawings and then we build it up from there. That's why it looks very reminiscent of the full size in terms of its outline, but also we worked hard on the detail. You've got the hard plastic parts with the exhaust, with the rear view mirror, the aerial stub, the cannons, split flaps here, which are uh, painted, pre-painted inside. These are plastic and fully detailed. And of course, you've got the scowl looking steerable tail wheel and the gear doors with the faux oleos, the intakes. And if I bring it round to the front here, you'll see that three blade, scowl looking three blade propeller and spinner. An important note uh, at the front end, spec wise, it's the same 770 kV Aerostar brushless outrunner. It has a Aerostar 50 amp speed controller pre-installed and it has nine gram servos throughout as well as those electronic retracts. Now the spinner is a thing to note and I'm going to mention that just because one of the other reasons for choosing this scheme, it's one of the few green and brown uh, early Mark Spitfire schemes with a more vibrant spinner. Now this white spinner is true to scale but what it does up in the air in terms of flying the model, it really helps with orientation and you'll see that in the next part of the video when we go out and fly this thing. One more thing, I will open up the hatch here. This is magnetically held. You will see the recommended 2200 for us. Um, you basically install it all the way forward as much as you can. You'll also notice on these hard plastic detail parts, there is some slots. This is for additional air in and that lets air over the battery. And there is some air out at the rear of the exhaust as well. It's a glass fiber battery tray. Behind that, you've got a six channel receiver that you'll need to provide because it's a six channel model. So there's nothing much else to say about this stunning Mark II Spitfire from Durafly. Uh, I'm going to let the flying do the talking. We're going to take it out now and give a flight review of this Mark II from Durafly. All right, so we are now here out of the strip and we're going to put the uh, Durafly Mark II through its paces. Now I say Mark II, it is the second version of the Mark I, but it is actually a Mark II again. This is a early 1941 scheme and uh, model. And of, just as a reminder, the ES is for Eagle Squadron. Again, this is the Americans that flew the Spitfire. So it's the perfect uh, illustration of that 
special relationship the Americans and the British have and it worked very well in their favour in those early days in 1941. So bear in mind we are on grass, it's a little bit long for this time of year but uh, well I'll talk you through it when we're out there, you just got to be careful uh, on the elevator, feed it in gradually as with the power and uh, then it will hop up out the, uh, up into the air very, very nicely. But it's a Spitfire, narrow track, always got to be mindful of that, especially on this smaller size. But on short grass, you should be absolutely fine. Sun's come out, let's take her up. Okay, so the safety switch is off, motor spinning freely. Now I'm, one, I'm gonna be in probably high or mid rates on takeoff, just so I can hold full up elevator, just to keep the towel firmly down to stop it from nosing over and as the as the uh, wheels get unstuck as it were from the surface you get some motion going then you gradually feed in power and then of course you want to counter the torque with some opposite rudder right rudder in this case of course uh, but slowly feed in the power and also you don't need to take off at full power either and remember because you're in higher rates on the elevator be gentle on the towel again this is only if you're taking off from grass and it's a little bit tricky but there's no wind now so let's take her up you ready Okay, so holding full up elevator, slowly increase power, let it get rolling under its own steam. There we go, you've got traction now. Now feed in power, ease off the elevator, and away you go. Now probably a little bit underpowered there, the takeoff. Going to come around for a full power pass. Ready? Ready. Da 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 da. Achtung Spitfire! Oh, That's properly quick. Victory roll there, that's low rate. Let's do a roll center line here, how we're looking on camera. Nice. Good roll. Just shot myself a German down. No offense to our German viewers there, I'm just uh, reciting history. All right, here we go. Getting Full into character. Again. Look at that white spinner. Mm. Yes. Da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm just there. Uh, always got the Battle of Britain theme song in my head when I'm uh, flying this Spitfire. So, as you can see, it's really, really grooving. Every inch from every angle, it looks like a Spitfire. LEDs there on the wingtips. Crank over the wing a bit there. Full power again. All right, let's uh, take it up a bit. So, we know it's a Spitfire. It looks everything like a Spitfire. That's fine. Spitfires were always quite um, uh, well behaved, really well behaved models. Uh, air, sorry, full size aircraft. Pilots often talked about. It become them becoming one with the airframe, and it really feels like this with the Durafly model too. This is half power pass now. Now, I, for me, and my pilot's eye view, even with the glasses on, my sunglasses, I'm seeing that white really pop, and that's why I talked about earlier. Really wanted something to help with orientation. You can probably see it there nicely. It's a bit sun colours. Really sticking out nicely. Now, I'll take it up and I'll show you guys uh, a stall because it's been very well engineered. It's got a very benign stall. How's that looking on camera? I got it. So I'm into wind and I'm going to pull full up elevator now. And it just kind of mushes, it doesn't drop. You let the nose come down and then you slowly apply power. Now, speaking of power, look at this climb. It will be unlimited vertical if you want it to be. Rolling out the top, low rates on that again. And you're going to do a really fast, high power, full power pass. Okay, here we go. Oh, ho, ho. I think the Germans were heading for the trenches then. Oh, it looks so good banked like that. That elliptical wing is beautiful. Let's show you the underside here. There we go. That's the uh, typical colour, of course, for a Mark, early Mark II, before they changed over to the green and grey and the lighter grey underneath. It was that kind of sky blue or duck egg, I think they call it at the bottom there. Do a really low pass now, mid throttle. Very, very, very nice. And it, the wind's getting a little bit choppy here, it comes and goes, but it handles well. It's, it is only just over a meter span, 40, close to 44 inches, but that means it transports in one piece in your car and it can take some wind. Full power again. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Now, of course, the benefit this has over the Mark V that we previously released, um, same model but with the Mark V variant with the cannons, you don't have the uh, annoyance of those cannons you know, becoming a problem sticking in the ground or whatever. It's a nice, clean, true, original elliptical wing and I'll show you that wing there. Look at it, it's a thing of beauty. Now, I've been flying for a good while already and on flight times on a 2200 Forest, you will get in excess of six or seven minutes. So I'm going to uh, calm it down now and you can see I'm flying in a really 
really close uh, proximity and look, you can see that it just really cruises nicely. This is just uh, above half throttle. I'm going to keep it at that little bit of down trim using the coordinated turns that keeps the nose coming round. And I'll come in and I'll put a bit of flaps on downwind. A bit silly, but there we go. That's mid flaps. To see the lights sticking in there. See the split flaps on the rear? Well, I can. I hope you can too. Now I'm going to go full flaps as I bring it into wind just to show you how much you can slow it down. And of course, it's rock, rock steady. Feed in a little bit of power to keep the momentum. Look at that. Wow, so, so nice. But I'm not in any trouble. My gear's still functioning. I don't have to pancake with the gear up. So I'm going to bring it around for a landing pretty soon. Did you say earlier that the color on the bottom is called duck egg? I, I can't remember. That sounds so British. I love yeah. it. It could be duck. I think it's duck egg or, or sky. I really, I used to know this stuff by heart. I studied, you yeah, know, this is before the internet. I used to read nothing but aviation books all the time. And I knew all about it. Slow victory roll there. I've got very low rates on these settings. Oh, speaking of which, so that was a low rate. Let's just do a high rate one. Okay, you ready? Ready. This is high rate roll. Ridiculous. In fact, I don't even like it. That's way too fast for my liking. So, Not very scary at all. No, this is more low rate. Let's try and do a kind of victory roll. So you pull up a bit, you bring it over, and then ease off the top. Well, that's okay. Now my timer telling me it's time to land. I know I've got more in the pack. I'm going to bring it round into what I believe is into wind. Gear's coming down now. It's pretty much diagonal over the field now. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm going to go into mid-rate on the elevator because I want that authority on the tail because I don't want it to nose over. Keep some speed up. It's important to keep the speed up and let it land onto the surface and then flare, 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 flare. There we go. Nice we have done. landed. Rather a nice one, I think, as well. I'll bring it back and I'll show you guys the, shell, uh, the cell checker. Let's have a look now. Oh, look, I've lost a little bit of the exhaust there. That's annoying. The little fish tail there. Just make sure they're secure when you receive the model. So you might have to come a bit closer. I've got my old cell checker, because I've lost my other one. So 3.79 across the board thereabouts. And that was after what? Six minute flight, I think? Yep, so that's really rather good. So thank you very much for tuning in for the uh, official flight review of the new Durafly Mark II Spitfire. There she is, thing of beauty available in uh, all the warehouses uh, that uh, you're able to order from now. Uh, there are some spare parts available too, so be sure to check those out. And uh, well, thank you very much for watching and leave comments below. We always appreciate those. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and look out for more videos coming soon on Hobby King. Bye.